one, take my wing. Let's investigate. Yes, sir! Where is that scouting report? It was due an hour ago! S sorry sir. We're still waiting on the last member of the squad to send the update before we can submit it. The Soviets have been mobilizing for something. We don't have eyes on their movements. Just the one, sir. He said he was going to try to tell a fighter heading east and just sort of went silent. So we lost him? We were worried that might be the case, but no. His transponder is still active. Uh, open a comm channel. Shark 5, sir. Shark 5. Come in, Shark 5. Shark 5, do you read? Shark 5. You know, a lot of Greek mythology is just kind of a roguelike if you really think about it. Damn it all! Where is he? G General, sir, I'm reading a massive Soviet attack force inbound. What? Where from? They're coming from the east, sir. For the love of... Order squadrons Bravo and Charlie to head back ASAP. Have Delta take up positions along the eastern perimeter. Don't give those bastards an inch! Base under attack. Oh crap, oh crap! I'm dead. Okay, I can do this. I don't have to fuck up again. I can do this. 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 I can. Order the full evacuation of Eagle's Nest 1. We are pulling out of Eagle's Nest 1. There we go. Today we're going to be talking about Battlezone. Nope, not that one. Nope. 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 That one. Originally released in 1998, it was remastered in 2016. 
That's the version I'll be using for my footage, since the necromantic ritual to bring back my old computer kinda failed. Developed by Activision, Battlezone is a mixed FPS RTS based around a conflict between America, the NSDF, and the Soviets, the CCA, in, well, space. It's one of the few examples of mixing together an RTS and another genre where both styles come at each other, rather than being terrible. This all stems from how Battlezone handles its gameplay. With the entire tactical interface only needing a few buttons to operate, and only needing to manage three buildings, one builder, and the two main resources of scrap and pilots. It lends itself well to RTS micromanagement while still letting you join in on the fun yourself. There's a ton of vehicles, each with their upsides and downsides. Alongside a ton of weapons to choose from. And the unit AI is actually... mostly functional. Everything is really self-explanatory and easy to read at a glance, owing to the fantastic design work of both factions. You can always easily tell what's coming at you from a distance, just from the silhouette alone. Also, it just feels good to fly and shoot. It's probably why this game is a favorite of mine now, and back when I was but a little baby shark. Do 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 do. It was more the cool ships and shooty bang bangs that caught my attention more than anything else. But building up your base and flying around was fun, as was just blowing up enemy vehicles. I even played against my dad once. He utterly destroyed me, left me with just my recycler, and then proceeded to fuck with me and laugh the whole time. Uh, if you're gonna play with me, you can at least try to put up an actual fight. I don't play games with my dad anymore. But just because it's easy to understand doesn't mean there isn't depth to it. Army composition still matters a ton, as do the weapons you choose to arm them with. Give a bomber a bigger bomb. Give a tank super cannons. Give a turret another cheap minigun double its firepower. Give it two super cannons to overpower it even more. Fuck it, give it a microwave ray, why not? Or better yet, if you don't like the weapons that come standard on your vehicles, just steal your opponents instead. You can use any vehicle, so go nuts. Heck, you can even play as one for resource gatherers for some extreme high octane action. Both factions have similar units, but generally the Americans are faster, while the Soviets have slightly more health and ammo. There's some differences in standard loadouts, but you still have access to the same weapons overall. But why are the Americans and Soviets duking out in space, you might ask? Well... As it turns out, the space race was a lie. After a meteor shower in Alaska, both US and Soviet scientists discover a type of biometal that can remember past forms, namely those of unknown weapons. Since this is the Cold War, both nations naturally want more weapons to destroy the other with. But that requires more metal. And where is that metal? In outer space, of course. Making the space race the perfect cover to pursue more of this mysterious biometal. As campy as the premise and voice acting are, there's a surprising amount of sincerity to it. It's a harrowing tale of the constant escalation of power that the Cold War could have led to. In space. The giant space robots are a metaphor for nuclear warfare and mutual destruction. This is even integrated into the gameplay to a degree. Although the metal is your primary resource, so too are the pilots who operate your vehicles. And if you really want to fight a war of attrition... Victory at any cost. With how long it takes ejected pilots to walk back to base across the large maps, you're practically encouraged to run them down or blow them up whenever possible. The pilots are just as valuable as the metal that created the weapons of destruction they ride in. I mean, it's still super fun to just run them down, but it helps add to the weight of the story that you're encouraged to just run down people because you don't want to give them a chance to fight back. You can bolster the ranks a bit, but if you run out of pilots, you can't make more units. You are screwed. Hope all those fancy weapons were worth it. But as the story goes on, you find out that the precursor race that made the metal had a similar issue. Two separate factions making stronger and stronger weapons to outdo the other. And naturally, the reaction from the Americans and Soviets to this is, hmm, that's odd. Hey, look at this cool new weapon we made. History repeats, yada yada yada. It's a fun concept with a serviceable story. It's also mostly just explaining text dumps after missions, or from your player character, Grizzly One's, narration. It only got one official expansion, Battlezone Red Odyssey. 
I actually never even knew this expansion existed until I just happened upon it on the Steam page for Battlezone's remaster. Apparently it was a pretty limited release originally, with only 400 copies being made and released in the US. But I guess it was popular enough to receive the remaster treatment, and hey, it's more Battlezone content. I love the base game, so surely I'd love this, right? <laughs> uh, no. Originally a minor concept by the base game's team, development was passed along to a third party. Team Evolve. Although mostly forgotten, someone at Rebellion decided it should be remastered alongside the base game. I hate this person. In the Red Odyssey, the Chinese came into space alongside the Russians apparently, and are now the stereotypical secret but super powerful enemy we never knew about. That's literally it, they're just... there. You play as either the Chinese in a prequel campaign, or the Black Dogs. Originally a secretive Black Ops group in the base game, but now made out to be a bunch of garbage towing losers, I guess. Over the course of both campaigns, you discover a portal that lets you jump across planets in an instant. They even found a path to the other Precursor homeworld. I guess they just had a backup somewhere. So now it's just a constant back and forth for control of the portals. That's it, that's the whole story. The individual missions don't matter much since they just end up contributing nothing to the overall narrative. Almost every achievement I accomplish is just undone in some off-screen narration, or just by literally playing the next mission. This isn't helped by the ridiculously repetitive nature of the writing in general. It's filled to the brim with redundant dialogue, glossed over explanations, or just explaining things already implied by the dialogue before it. Our morale and discipline dropped further and faster every day. Morale was at its lowest. Morale climbed higher. Our morale was at a peak. The Red Odyssey had what Battlezone was missing. A solid campaign. Morale was morale. The Red Odyssey has an annoying habit of treating everything in this story as a given. For example, in the base game, when the Precursor Relic showed up, characters dropped everything to get them as it became a desperate scramble to learn all that they could since those relics could turn the very tide of the war itself. You got lore and history in the mission briefings, theorizing, excitement, fear, all sorts of things. In the expansion, it's that looks fascinating. Can you bring it back to us? The discovery of a precursor homeworld is treated as, at best, an afterthought. Hell, we never even learn what's on the damn thing or why it's abandoned at all. The game has some ideas for lore that, on the surface, could be interesting, but it refuses to engage with those ideas on anything other than a utilitarian level. Like, the whole concept of the portal itself and what its discovery could mean is just glossed over at best. A new technology lets you travel instantly across the galaxy? Well, shit, that's important. Why is it important? Cause it lets you travel across the galaxy. Duh. Stop trying to think about this shit, you fucking nerd. But that's literally the least interesting aspect of this discovery. How about showing the characters reacting to the idea of instant travel? Or them discussing the military or economic implications? Showing some amazement. Hell, the Black Dogs are set up as a bunch of losers in this expansion. How about their mission of cleanest technology being the reason they're promoted to a squad of super badasses? And their excitement over finally getting the recognition they deserve? It doesn't have to be anything impressive, it just has to be something. I mean, for fuck's sake, you have a narrator to provide a point of view character and add human element to the story. This is literally his entire fucking purpose, and at best he just provides status updates. One of us had to go through and take a Chinese tank. The mission would be dangerous beyond belief. Walking alone with no support, a lone capitalist on a planet of communists. This isn't helped by the voice acting, which... I don't have to remind you how crucial this mission is, Lieutenant. If we don't get control of that portal, we have no way of knowing what the Chinese are up to. Okay, that's just the Black Dog's voice acting. Maybe the Chinese voice acting in this game made during the 1990s is bet- Oh, uh, sorry, Chari! I am building! Uh, God, there's so much wrong with this expansion. Also, can I just say that the Chinese designs are just super uninspired? There's maybe one or two decent ones, but they're all just really boxy, their colors are super desaturated, and sometimes they're just... What? This could all work if the game was trying to draw on that contrast, but I guess art direction got tossed somewhere with the voice direction in the budget. But hey, this is a video game, and all that shit about the story and lore doesn't matter so long as the gameplay can sell it. I mean, this is a video game from the 90s. 
No one pretends to care about the story like they do now, as long as the game is good, right? Difficulty in video games can be tough to address, since everyone has their own limits of what they can tolerate. What might be bullshit to one person might be a pretty fair challenge to another. The general consensus is, if it's something you can predict and reasonably react to, as long as you aren't charging into everything head first, it's fair. This can vary from attacks that have clear indicators, animation buildups especially, or situations where you can reasonably guess what might be coming at you, and can be handled with careful preparation. But tricking the player with things they can't predict is where the line's pretty firmly drawn. Minor cheats can be appropriate when it comes to AI, but at certain points when you're throwing cheap tactics at the player for the sake of difficulty, you have failed at making an engaging experience. It's like looking at I want to be the guy and thinking, yes, this is a fair and well-balanced game. So what I'm trying to say is, five instant kill snipers on a hilltop you have no way of knowing are there until they start shooting at you is kind of bullshit. Twice. The first level in the expansion is actually genius in that regard. In that it teaches you the one bullshit tactic it will never stop using. Spawning tons of enemies on you. You go out to examine some space dust, barely being given enough time to produce a few units before it fails you because video game. The space dust turns out to be two cloaked fighters, and then your base is ambushed by a horde of them. Uh, do note, this encounter happens a distance out so you can't easily get back and quickly react to the incoming horde. Usually by the time you get back, you lose. Welcome to the Red Odyssey. We're going to screw you over at every turn if you can't psychically predict what we're going to do. The expansion is filled to the brim with these kinds of gameplay decisions. Just had to heavily assault a base to rescue a recycler? We're going to spawn two golems and bombers right on top of it. Oh look, an objective to defend. On the other side of the map. Better get moving because we just threw a ton of turrets at it. Assaulting a poorly designed base? There's insta-kill snipers all over the place that blend in with the background. Oh, and they can see through your cloak and you can't see them on radar. Fuck you. It's bad game design that's bordering on lazy. Just spawning hordes of enemies on top of my base and screaming, Think fast, dipshit! Repetition of a bullshit tactic doesn't suddenly make that tactic less bullshit. It just makes it more and more annoying to deal with. Yes, after a certain point, the player should expect to get ambushed unfairly without warning. But the predictability of said ambush doesn't affect my general strategy in a meaningful way. Especially if you repeatedly change the rules on when and how it happens. If you're going to punch me in the face without warning randomly throughout the day, I will begin to expect said punch. But if you suddenly drop a car on my head and then chastise me for not expecting that, then I'm sorry, but you're a bad designer. Also just a really shitty person. Don't hit people with cars. Review shark tip of the day. It's a fundamental misunderstanding of how a game is balanced just to make things tough on the player. Instead of, say, varying up weapons on units, or limiting the player's unit choices to encourage unconventional strategies, it opts for the laziest route possible. Here's eight golems right on top of your objective. Fuck you. And that's not even getting into how the Chinese are balanced against the other three factions. Or, well, aren't. Uh, okay, so we have the Chinese faction, the CRA. We need something to make them stand out. The Soviets are stronger, the Americans are faster, the Black Dogs have strong but unwieldy weapons. What else can we do? Ooh, what if we gave them a cloaking device? Oh, uh, that could be interesting, I guess. Does it use up ammo like the weapon that makes you invisible to radar? Nope. They just have it. So, what's the counterplay? Well, they leave a little dust trail when moving, and they can't fire when cloaked. Also, literally nothing can see through their cloak, and the AI bugs out for a few seconds when they come out of cloak and won't attack them. Also, they can cloak walkers. Okay. That seems wrong, but sure. So they're alpha strikers, then? Nope. So then they're slower, right? Or of less maneuverability? Actually, they're just as maneuverable as the Americans. 
So then their units cost more or are slower to build? Nope. Okay, you do realize this game has to be balanced, right? Oh, I know. And when it's not using cheap tactics, it's just boring. How would you feel if I told you there were not one, but two, not two, but three, actually not three, but four missions that require you to move slowly across a giant map, either on foot or on a slow-ass utility vehicle? Oh, and those on-foot maps? They have the insta-kill snipers all over. I have no idea why Red Odyssey was considered to be worthy of an HD remaster. Despite some of its ideas not being awful on paper, everything about the execution screams either inexperience or incompetence. Though looking at Team Evolve's other projects, I'm leaning towards the latter. It's awful too because the remaster team clearly put a lot of effort into trying to make this look good, but polishing and dressing up garbage just gives you fancy garbage. It's just hot, steaming garbage that is also on fire despite being in a vacuum of space. Well, at least the music's good. The Red Aussie gets an almost ruined my childhood more than the actual childhood did out of 10. Just play the base game, it's still really goddamn good. Tune in next time when I figure out how to get back to Earth after accidentally destroying the only American base on the moon. And hey, don't forget to sub... Uh, uh. Hey, guys! Uh... Lenin Yanu Groovy Paruski? <laughs> okay, good joke, guys. You're totally coming back, right? Right? Guys? Ah, shit. Huh, that's all on this.